Cybercrime. It's a term that everyone seems familiar with. But what does it actually mean? And more importantly, what does it mean for business? At Fujitsu, we define it as the theft of data, intellectual property, financial information, or disrupting infrastructure via the internet. According to a 2013 PwC UK government report, 93% of businesses reported a security breach in 2012. Meanwhile, the Lloyd's Risk Report 2013 shows that cybercrime is now the third highest risk to businesses, up from the 12th position the year before. So you would expect business to be taking cybercrime seriously. Often, the opposite is true. In retail, a report by eMarketer predicted e-commerce sales would reach $1.2 trillion in 2013, making the industry an attractive target for cybercriminals. The challenge for retailers, however, is to put in place security measures that do not impact the shopping experience for customers. Analysis shows that e-commerce sites reject around 5% of orders based on security protocol, but 80% of these are actually legitimate transactions. The result is a significant reduction in revenue from lost sales. So what is the lesson? Invest the time to recognise your risks. In manufacturing, cybercrime is a major threat to operational productivity. The UK government warns that storage and analysis of large amounts of data presents massive opportunities for theft and misuse. Information-rich manufacturing firms are a prime target for criminals with a more specific agenda. The theft of confidential designs or the disruption of key industries. But with huge volumes of production data, manufacturers can be put off by the high costs of protecting everything. So what should they do? Know precisely what needs protecting. Financial markets are often high-profile victims of cybercrime. That's why the UK's Depository Trust Clearing Corporation exposed some of the key threats to the sector. Targeted attacks were one example. These can lay dormant until they encounter a computer with a specific signature. One that can open up access to data on currency calculations or bilateral trades, for instance. Viruses were another. Even if computers are isolated from the internet, these can hide on USB drives waiting until they are plugged into the exchange and then releasing a Trojan worm. There are also internal threats, such as the malicious removal of data. So what does all of this tell us? Be clear what you are protecting against. Law firms are another attractive target for hackers because they hold a potential treasure trove of valuable commercial information. A recent paywall survey showed that the legal sector had the highest proportion of victims of cybercrime compared with other sectors. Acquiring the skills to deal with cybersecurity threats is obviously a key issue for the sector. The National Audit Office claims a decade-long decline in computer science teaching has left UK PLC with an IT security skills shortage, meaning staff training has shot up the agenda. The major learning? Train your people to recognise the threats. In the US, data shows that between October 2012 and May 2013, more than 50% of investigated cyber incidents affected the energy sector. UK utilities are not immune to the threats. Any major attack could cripple infrastructure, undermine trust and see customers switching to new suppliers. Threats are evolving and the whole supply chain is a target, not just individual companies. In this industry, just like in others, with evolving threats, what is the key to protection? Keep up to date on everything. If you go back 20 years, cybercrime was all about antivirus. We addressed that and now it's become more sophisticated. Cybercrime is an ongoing battle. The question is, are you taking it seriously?